Hello and welcome to Star Trek is Life. In this video we will take a quick look at the Ferengi physiology. The Ferengi were a warp capable humanoid species from the planet Ferenginar. Ferengi civilization was built on free enterprise where earning profit was the sole meaningful goal in life, superseding all other endeavors. To the Borg they were known as species 180, which is ironic because Wait, no, that's not ironic at all. On average, Ferengi were shorter than humans. They had orange-brown colored skin, long blue toenails and blue fingernails, enlarged skulls, wrinkled noses, and sharp teeth. Internally, they had ascending ribs and upper and lower lungs, as well as an unusual four-lobed brain that could not be read by telepathic species such as the Betazoids. Although Counselor Deanna Troy was able to detect deception and danger from the Ferengi Bach. On a completely unrelated note, Counselor Deanna Troy's nickname was Captain Obvious. Ferengi physiology was also similar to that of the Dopterians, of which they were distant relatives. Hey, guess what the Ferengi's most distinguishing feature was? Their ears, or also called lobes, which gave them extreme acute hearing, sensitive enough to tell a person's species and gender, even through electronic distortion, atmospheric altitude changes, and the decibel level of sound. The lobes of the Ferengi male were larger than those of the females. The sensitivity of the ears, while providing great sensual pleasure, also made them vulnerable to pain and other problems, including severe infections of the tympanic membrane, which, if left untreated, could become fatal. The term lobeline was used to refer to a young Ferengi. In fact, according to Nog on Ferenginar, we learned about the continuum while we still had our first set of ears. Ferengi blood pressure was much higher than that of humans. When Nog, Rom, and Quark were sent back to 1947 and analyzed by human doctors, one of the medics commented on Quark's blood pressure, 250 over 167? If you were human, I'd say you were due for a heart attack. Ferengi blood contained cells called pyrocytes. The Ferengi appeared to have rather strong immune systems. Quark was one of the few members of the station's crew unaffected by the aphasia virus that struck Deep Space Nine in 2369. Ferengi were known to have lifespans that could exceed 100 years. Following a cosmetic procedure performed on Vulcan, Ishkup commented that her lobes hadn't felt so firm in a century. When startled, frightened, or in pain, Ferengi often emitted a high-pitched scream. Some Ferengi demonstrated a hiss reaction when threatened or in distress. A Ferengi diet consisted mostly of insects and other invertebrates like crabs or slugs. They also ate fish. Likewise, Nog's favorite earth food was said to be squid. While visiting a planet in the Gamma Quadrant in 2370, Quark complained about the native bugs, calling them being in his food as being disgusting. When Benjamin Sisko recalled, I thought Ferengis liked eating bugs, Quark was quick to note only certain bugs, Ferengi bugs. And that, my Star Trek of friends, was the Ferengi physiology and everything that comes with it. If you appreciate the information presented in this video, please consider subscribing to this channel. And remember, Star Trek is life.